Okay, so the effect that you're trying to go for is that you just want to turn on the fog and instead of the density going from 0.5 immediately, you want a nice transition to 0.5. So let's show how to do this with a button. Something that I should mention is that if you ever want to turn on fog during the game, make sure fog is checkmarked, otherwise you'll never be able to turn on fog later on. Anyways, we just want to come back into our inspector and the first thing we need to do is create a button. So I'm going to come over here. I'm just going to create a basic cube. I'm going to fly around, go control shift F to place it where I am. I'm just going to scale it down to 0.15 on all axis and reset its rotation. And I'm just going to place it over here. Then I'm going to come up to its box collider and set is triggered to equal true as we don't want to collide with this button. And then we're going to come down to add component and create an udon behavior script. Then we just want to come into our project window. We're going to right click, go create, VRChat, Udon, Udon Graph Program Asset, and I'm just going to call this Fog Script. And then we want to open up the Udon Graph. Now I'm going to click on this and go Shift Spacebar to full screen this. Now, as I want the fog to be turned off by default, I'm just going to create a start node, and I'm going to use a render settings set fog node to turn off the fog when the game begins. Now we can actually start coding our script. Now, first, we should just create a button that toggles our fog onto the set desired amount, and then from there, we can add in the delay. So I'm just going to create an interact node which will play whenever we click on the button. Then I want to use our render settings set fog density node, and then I'm going to plug it in and set this value to 0.5. However, I'm turning off the fog up here, so I will also need to tell it to turn on the fog. So I'm going to use a render settings set fog node, and this one will turn on the fog when the game begins. So I'm just going to hit compile and come back into our scene. I'm going to apply our script to it, and then I'm going to play test this and see that it works. So now when the game begins, we can come into our lighting tab, and we can see that fog is turned off despite the fact that it was turned on by default. I can then click my button, and we can see that the fog is now on, and it's got a density of 0.5. Awesome, so now let's make this a lot smoother and a bit more elaborate. Coming back into the graph, we're gonna need a couple of settings here. First, we need a way of defining what the target value is so that we can keep referring to it. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna create a float value, and I'm gonna call this target fog level. I'm also gonna make this public so we're able to change it in the inspector later if we feel like it. Now, the first way I'm going to show you how to do this is the less efficient way of doing it, and then I'll show you how we can optimize it. So first, whenever we interact the node, we want it to set the fog to be true. For this unoptimized version, this doesn't change. However, now we want to toggle whether or not the fog is on or off. So let's do that first. We'll test that, and then we'll make a smooth transition. Okay, so now we want to set what this fog level is. So I'm going to grab my target fog level, and I'm going to plug that into here. However, now when you say what target fog level we want. So what we want to do is we want to set this target fog level to be 0.5 when we first click the button, and then to be 0 when we click it a second time. So what we need to do is we need to check to see if target fog level equals 0.5. So I'm going to use a float equals node, change it from object to float, and we're just going to check if it equals 0. We now want to use a branch node, and if it equals true, we want to set this target float level to be 0.5 because it doesn't equal 0. And if this doesn't equal zero, aka it equals 0 0.5, then we want to set it back down to zero. So we can just use two of these. We also want a float constant node, and we're going to use this to change this to 0 0.5, and we're going to use this one down here to set it to zero. Now I've let this graph get a little bit messy here, so let me just clean this up. I'm going to use a block node because we want to do two things here. First, we want to change what the value is for our set target fog variable. And second of all, we actually want to change what the fog level is. So I'm going to put this down here. Now I should mention a block node, it will play whatever comes from the first arrow and all its parts first, and then it'll play whatever comes out of the second arrow. I'm using a block node in this instance, because you don't want to rejoin a branch node once it's split off like this. Or at least it used to cause problems with Udon Graph. I don't know if that's still a problem, but to make things a bit cleaner, I'm going to use a block node. Okay, so we now have two parts. Whenever we click the button, it will check to see whether or not target fog level equals zero. If it does equal 0, that means that the fog is off, and thus we'll set the fog to 0.5. And if it doesn't equal 0, that means the fog is currently set to 0.5, and thus we want to reset it to 0. Once it's done that, it will first turn on the fog, just to make sure, before it sets fog density to be the new target fog level. Let's quickly compile this and playtest this to see that it works. And sure enough, when we click the button, we can see that it nicely toggles in between the two. Sweet! Okay, so now the bit you've all been waiting for. How do I make this smooth? Well, once again, let me show you how to do this the unoptimized way. And by that, I mean using event update. You see, now that we have a target fog level, we can now set our fog render distance to go closer and closer and closer to our target fog level once every frame. So to show how to do this, I'm just going to grab this and plug this into our update loop. However, we don't want to directly set it to the target fog level. We want to set it a bit closer to the target fog level. So I'm going to use a mathf lerp node. And now this one's a bit of a weird one to get your head around. But basically, we have these two floats here. 
and then we have another float which is kind of like the amount of mixing these two will have. So if A equals 0 and B equals 1, but T equals 0, the outputting float will be 0. However, if T equaled 1, the output would be 1, aka all of B and none of A. Now, if T equals 0 0.5, then this would equal 0 0.5. Though that might be a bit confusing, so let me change B to be 2, and now this will equal 1, because we're grabbing 0.5% of the top one and the bottom one. Now, this node is used all the time in order to make smooth transitions in between things. I think one of the most common examples is to smooth out a player's movement using a vector-free lerp node, which works exactly the same way, where it smooths in between the two positions using a decimal fraction amount at the bottom. Okay, so for what we want, we want our target fog level to be the bottom one, and then we want the current fog level to be the top one. So we can get that using a render settings get fog density node, plug that into the top, and now if I change this value to be 0 0.01 and plug that in, it will now slowly get to our new target fog density. In fact, I compile this and show you this, and we can see now that if I click the button, it does a nice transition in between the two. However, the lower frame rate we have, the slower this will happen. So let's fix that. Basically what's happening every single frame is that we're updating this to be closer and closer and closer by a set amount. However, event update plays every frame, and so if you have less frames per second, then the amount of transition will be less per second. So what we want to do is we want to see how long did this frame take. So to do so, we can use a time get delta time, and we want to multiply this by our scale factor. So I'm going to use a float constant node of 0.01 times 60, which is 0.6, and we want to multiply this together using a float multiplication node. There is a shortcut for that node, like much like the branch node, but I never remember it. And we just want to plug that into our mathf lerp node. So now if we compile this and play test this, we can see that when we click the button, it does a transition much like it did before. However, this will be reliable amongst all your players. So your quest players won't see a really slow fog transition. Okay, so now this float value will determine how fast the transition happens. So we probably want to make that into a variable we can change. So we can just hold down C and click on it to make it a variable. Or you could come up here and create a float variable and then plug that in. And I'm just going to rename this to fog change speed. I'm going to come down here and set its default value to, uh, to 0 0.6, which is what I had it before. And now I'm just going to click on my button and just make sure it shows that value, which it didn't. So that's okay. I'm going to choose 0 0.6 for it. Also, target fog level doesn't need to be public, but it's just so we can see it when, when we're changing stuff. Thought I'd better clarify that. But anyways, this is how you would do a nice transition. However, this code will play every single frame. Which isn't ideal, because I don't know how often you planned on changing the fog, and if it was constantly, then this would be totally fine. But I'm assuming this is a more of like a one-time event. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that this update loop isn't playing all the time. To do that, there are two ways of doing this, and I'm going to do it the lazy way first, and then the more sophisticated way second. But for both ways, we need a bool to say whether or not we are currently changing the fog. So I'm going to come up here and create a bool. I'm going to call this is changing fog. And what we want to do is we want to check to see whether or not we are currently changing the fog before we play the rendering setting set fog distance. So I'm going to create a branch node and I'm going to plug our is changing fog into this branch node. Now this is changing fog node by default will be off. So we need to tell it to be true whenever we click the button. So I'm just going to drag it in while holding control to set the variable. And then I'm going to create a bool constant node and make it true. So now whenever we click the button, it will change our target fog level. We'll then turn on the fog, and then we'll say to our update loop that we are indeed now changing the fog level. Then down here, we've got is changing fog. And if we are currently changing the fog, then we'll set the fog density. But if this bool is false, it won't do anything, which will save us from running this event. However, currently when we turn this on, there's no way of turning it back off again. So we need to check to see if our fog density has reached the target fog level. To do so, we need to create another branch node. So I'm going to create one here. I'm then going to create a float equals node, change it to float, and then I'm going to check is our lerp value and our target fog level currently the same. If they are the same, then we want to set is changing fog to be false. Also, I want a way of turning off the fog if we're not using it. So if we have reached our new value and the target fog level equals zero, then we can safely turn off the fog. So I'm just going to duplicate this. And so if target fog level equals zero, set our fog to be off. But honestly, that's a bit of a nitpick, and I don't know if it really would affect performance. So feel free to leave that out if you don't quite understand what I did there. 
or just want to keep your code simple. Also, in order for us to be able to see that the is changing fog is turning off, I'm just going to make this public for now, but we can always change that later. So now we can come down here and we won't be able to see on the Udon script, but we can see it on edit public variables. We can see that is changing fog equals zero. When we click on the button and we reload it, we can see that is changing fog equals true. However, you'll notice it takes quite a while, if not forever, before is changing fog will turn off again. That is most likely because we run into floating point errors. And so we should probably do it so whenever we're close enough to the target fog level to update the fog level and then just disable the smooth update. So to do that, instead of us doing a check to see whether or not our lerp value equals our target fog level, we should just check to see whether or not we are close enough. Now to do a close enough, you want to use a float less than node. However, we need to see the difference between these two. So we can just do that using a float subtraction node. And I'm going to subtract our target fog level with our current fog level. However, this will only work one way. Sometimes we'll get negative values out of this. So we just want to use a mathf absolute node or abs. And this will make any negative value the positive version of it. So if it's negative 1, it'll turn it to 1. If it's negative 0 0.5, it'll turn it to 0 0.5, etc, etc. But if a 0 0.5 goes in here, it just is 0 0.5. So for us, we just want to check if this is less than 0.01 perhaps, and use that as our check instead of the equals node. Now let me just do a bit of cleanup, and now this looks a bit neater. However, because we're only doing it close enough, we should just make sure that it snaps to the correct value whenever this happens. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get our fog density, and I'm just going to set it to be whatever our target fog level is. And so now when you click on the button, it'll set our fog level and change set is changing to be true. Whenever this is true, we'll be setting our fog density to be closer to the target fog level. Then we'll be grabbing our value and subtracting that from the target fog level. And then we'll be checking to see if that is close enough to 0.01. By the way, the larger you make this number, the more snap there will be when it finally gets close enough. So fine tune this value to better suit your world. Then if it is close enough, we'll be setting our fog density to be our target fog level, just to make sure it is actually at the value that we want it to be. And then we'll just change the is changing fog ball to be false. And this will stop all this code from running until we click the button again. And then last and not really that important, but if the target fog level equals zero, we're just gonna turn off the fog because we don't need it. Awesome, so now let's hit compile and play test this. And now that we're in the world, we can just open up client sim to play around with this. We can see that our target fog level equals zero and that the is changing fog is off. When we click the button, we can see that it turned on and that it gets closer and closer. And then it turns off the is changing fog once we're close enough. And I didn't even see a snap at all, so we could probably make that value a bit closer. However, if we were to click the button again, we'll see that is changing fog to equal true again, the target fog level is zero, and after a while, we should see is changing fog turn off. And there we go. And if we go into our lighting tab, we can see that it also turned off the fog because we didn't need it. Awesome. Now, I mentioned there was another way of doing this that was a bit more efficient instead of using an event update, and that is with using send custom events. For this, we just want to replace our event update node with a custom event. I'm going to call this update fog level. And for this, we won't need the is changing fog ball. So I'm going to delete that out of my code. So for this, whenever we click on the button, what we want to do is we want to send this custom event. So I'm going to use a udon behavior send custom event, and I'm going to call this update fog level. So now this event will play, and it will make us one step closer to our target fog level. However, we need to make this event play over multiple frames in order for it to do a nice transition in between them. So the way we do that is we simply use a send custom event delayed frames node. We want to call our update fog level and we want to delay it by one frame. However, what we've created here is essentially the same update loop. Basically, whenever we click the button, it will play this update fog level and set our fog density and then tell it to play again in the next frame. However, we only want it to play if it's far enough away from the target fog level. So I'm going to grab my code over here and I'm going to put the send custom event and I'm going to get it to play only if we fail this check in terms of how close we were. So now whenever we click the button, it'll make us play this event and it'll make us go one bit closer to the fog density. If our fog density is now close enough to the target fog level, it will then update our target fog level and stop everything from happening. However, if it fails this check, it will play this event, which I'll tell our code to play this event again in the next frame. Awesome. So now we can test that. And we can see that our code works just like it did before. However, if I spam it, we'll notice that the fog goes a lot faster. The reason for this is because we've told this event to play and we've got multiple of these loops running at a single time. Now that is not ideal. And the fix for that is we need to bring back our is changing fog ball in order to stop this event from playing if we're currently changing the fog level. So we're just going to bring this back, but in a bit of a different way. 
So first of all, we want to check, are we currently changing the fog level? I'm going to grab from the false and put that into our send custom event. So if we are currently changing the fog level, we don't want it to do anything because we've already set what the target fog level is and it's already going to deal with that. However, if we aren't doing it, we do want to set is changing fog to be true. So I'm just going to create a bool constant node and plug that in. As for the rest of this, we just need to tell it to change is changing to be false if we have reached the target value. So now in summary, when, when the game begins, we're going to set the fog to be off because I didn't want it on when the game began. This is completely optional. Then when we click the button, we want to check to see if target fog level equals 0 0.5 or 0. However, feel free to change these values to whatever suits your world. Then once we've set the target fog level, we're going to play this next part of the block node, which is going to set the fog to be on. And then we're going to check, are we currently changing the fog level? If this ball is false, then we're going to set the ball to be true because we are going to start changing the fog level. And then we're going to tell it to play this event update fog level. For this event, every single time it plays, it's going to make the fog density slightly closer to the target fog level at whatever the fog change speed times delta time does for it. Then we're going to check how close the new fog density is to the target fog level. And if it's close enough, we're going to equal true on this ball, which is going to clamp the target fog level to be our target fog level. We're going to set our ball that says, are we changing the fog to be false? And then if our target fog level equals zero, we're just going to turn off the fog because we don't need it anymore and it'll be slightly more optimized. However, if we are not close enough to the target fog level, we'll play the send custom event delayed frames node, which will tell our code to play this event on the next frame. Awesome. So let's finally just compile this and play test it to see it all work. And now we can see that we can click the button and it changes the fog level. And if we spam the button, the fog doesn't come and go any faster than it did before. Awesome. So I hope you found this video helpful. Feel free to leave a like on the video if you liked it. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions. I now have links to my Discord and Patreon in the description below. And also feel free to check out some of the other videos that I have on the channel. But until next time, bye!